Hi, you guys. Today I have with me problem 6.80 from Yannick Friedman's University Physics textbook. Um, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy my videos. And if you don't, I hope you find something helpful. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Let's get started. A physics professor is pushed up a ramp inclined upward at 30.0 degrees above the horizontal as she sits on her desk chair which slides on frictionless rollers. The combined mass of the professor and the chair is 85.0 kilograms. She is pushed 2.50 meters along the incline by a group of students, um, by a group of students who exert a constant horizontal force of 600 newtons. The professor's speed at the bottom of the ramp is 2.00 meters per second. Use the work energy theorem to find her speed at the top of the ramp. Awesome. Okay, so let's go ahead and just draw a little, actually, it's not going to be so little, but let's just draw an image so that we know what we're talking about. Okay, so let's say that this is, oh, let's say this is some sort of ramp. Oh, that was so, okay. This is the ramp, and this is at 30 degrees. Okay, so I'm just gonna draw the, I guess, like physics professor as some sort of, I don't know, let's say like this is the chair. You know, I'm just gonna draw a box and that box is going to represent the physics professor and the chair combined. So this is prof, plus chair, okay? And we said what that this, the combined mass of these two, the object and the professor is 85.0 kilograms. Okay, so then, so we have a ramp upward at 30 degrees. The combined mass is 85.0 kilograms. She is pushed 2.50 meters. So she's pushed Two. Actually, I'm going to use a different color just so that it's like easy to visualize. Okay, 2.50 meters by a group of students who exert a constant force of, so F is equal to 600 newtons. Okay. The professor's speed at the bottom of the ramp is 2.00 meters per second. Okay, so right here, professor's speed at the bottom, VI is equal to 2.00 meters per second. Okay, so use the work energy theorem to find her speed at the top of the ramp. So we're looking for over here, what is VF, right? So what is VF at that spot right over there? I don't know why I drew a circle, but okay, whatever. It is what it is. Great. Okay, so now that we've drawn out this problem, let's write down all of our knowns and then discuss some concepts first. So let me just, we've included all of those in our diagram, but okay. So let's start off with our knowns, right? Our knowns are that there is some angle theta that's at 30 degrees, right? The mass of the prof plus the chair is equal to 85.0 kilograms. And the distance that the professor is pushed is 2.50 meters. Right, so that's her displacement. That's why I just did like a change in distance because that's like her displacement. And this force that these students exert is 600 newtons. And her speed at the bottom of the ramp is 2.00 meters per second. Okay, cool. So now what we want to do is talk a little bit about this problem. So Something I want to really draw your attention to is, uh, I'm going to use a highlighter. Okay, is this term right over here? Oh, that's that's not good. That, 
looks like I'm, I striked it out. Hmm. There we go. Okay. So work energy theorem. Work energy theorem. That is what we're going to talk about. And actually, I'm going to do that in purple just so that it stands out a little bit more. But we are using work energy theorem to figure out how to solve this problem. We're using work energy theorem to solve this problem. Okay, so what does that mean? So I'm actually going to go ahead and write down this work energy theorem. And what this work energy theorem says is that work, this is, this is, this is a direct quote from Annie Friedman's textbook. So you can um, follow along. Work done by the net force on a particle equals the change in the particles kinetic energy. Okay, cool. So this can all be displayed in this um, equation. So right? So the work done by the net force on a particle equals the change in the kinetic energy. All right, so how does that um, actually apply to our problem? So we can see here that there is a professor who's being pushed up a ramp, right? At some um, angle. And we have a, we have her mass along with her chair's mass, and she's pushed a certain distance, which is 2.50, by students who are exerting a force on her. Okay, so the professor has some sort of speed at the bottom, and we want to find what her speed is at the top. So let's talk a little bit about kind of the work that's being done on her, right? So again, if I'm going to go ahead and just draw this ramp again, right? I'll erase this in a bit, or I might not, I'll, I'll probably keep it, but I'm just drawing a bigger diagram, okay, 30 degrees. Okay, and the reason is because, so let's just say that at some point she's like in the middle, okay, on this ramp. So two things are being done. There is some force that the students are applying on her, right? So we have this like F applied and it's horizontal, right? And then um, we also have gravity that is also doing work like against her, right? Because there's force of gravity this way, right? And so if we, um, Sorry, I'm going to write this down, force of gravity. And so if we want to know what the total work done is, we have to consider the work that's done by this F applied and the work that's done by gravity. So what exactly is that? So let's start off with that. What is the total work done? And the total work done, we know that work, actually, let's just start off by um, what work is. Work is the dot product, the scalar dot product of a force and the path that, that um, okay, so if there is a force that's applied on some sort of particle, and then work is going to be that force times, or the dot, that force times the scalar dot product of the path it takes, or sorry, no, no, no. The work is the scalar dot product of the force that is applied on that object and the path that it takes. Yes, okay. So here we have 
work that's done by FA, right? So it's going to be um, FA and then the path that it takes, right? Which is going to be 2.5. And we also have WG work done by force of gravity and the path that that takes, right? Which is also 2.5, okay. So the interesting thing about this problem and the reason why it's like kind of a three dot problem is because there's quite a bit of trig involved, right? Because remember that we are moving or the professor is moving this way, right? And so what we're looking for is the scalar dot product between these two and these two, right? So let's do that. So this is going to be um, what is FA, which is 600, right? Because that's what's applied. And we have the distance, which it travels, or like the distance of the path, which is 2.5 times, and this angle um, between force applied and um, this right here, this path is 30 degrees right? Because this is parallel. Okay, so I'm going to do a little uh, in blue. So this is sort of like um like a zigzag path, right? So if this is 30 right over here, that means this is also 30, okay? So we know that it's going to be um, cos 30. Right? Awesome. Okay. And then we also have, one second. Okay, and then we also have the work done by gravity. So what is the work done by gravity? Well, Fg is going to be the mass times, this is, this is going to be mg, right? So that's going to be 9.8 times the mass, which is 85.0, okay, times 2.5, because that's the distance that it's moving, okay? And now we can look at this two ways, right? We can look at it as, um, okay, uh, the two ways we can look at it is that we can look at the angle between these two vectors, right? So this vector and this vector, right? But you can see that the work that gravity is doing is the opposite of the direction that the professor and chair are headed, which is up, right? Gravity is going down and the professor and chair are going up in the, y, in the y direction, right? And so we can look at this two way. We can either subtract the work that FG is doing, or if you take a look, we can just, um, okay, yeah, we can also just like add the vectors together, right? From, uh, Let's see how we're going to add them together. Give me one second. Okay, awesome. Okay, I was just uh, making sure that I had like the right convention, but okay. So for example, if we look at our WA, uh, our vectors, this and this make an angle of 30 degrees, right? Because if you take this um, and then you put them tail to tail, the angle here is 30 degrees, right? Well, I did a zigzag because it's pretty much the same exact thing, but this makes a 30 degree angle, which means that we can do two things. We can either put these two vectors tail to tail as well, right? So I'm gonna do that. And you can do that, which is, you know, um, 90 degrees plus this 30 degrees, right? So that's going to be 120 degrees. So we can add that. We can add 120 degrees when uh, the vectors are tail to tail, or we can recognize that there is, um, okay, actually let's do this. This is the more clear, more like mathematical way. Okay, so let's do that. So this is going to be um, cos, right, 120, okay? And now that means that work total is WA plus WG. Okay, so let's go ahead and rewrite that. And so WT is equal to, um, 
600 times 2.5 cos 30 plus 9.8 times 85 times 2.5 cos 120. Okay. So let's add this together and we get our WT. Um, but before we go ahead and do that, I mean, you can add them together right now, but what we can also do, and sorry, I'm just gonna create a little partition between this. Okay. What we can also do is we can go ahead and um, write down our statement for um, Delta K, which is change in kinetic energy. So what is the change in kinetic energy? Let's do that in pink. No. So what is delta K? Delta K, so we know that the professors, um, well, okay, so it's gonna be half of M and then VF squared minus VI squared, right? And so do we have VF squared? No, that's what we're trying to figure out. But we have the i squared, which is, um, well, we have the i, which is two, right? So that's going to be half of 85 times vf, which is, um, we don't know, vf squared minus two squared, right? And essentially w total and change in kinetic energy, these two are equal to each other, right? So these are equal. So we just have to isolate for VF. So let us do that. I'm just going to add all of this together just that I have some like nice, neat, um, actually I'm gonna use a different color so that it's just really, really clear for everyone. Okay, I'm gonna use this navy bluish color. So, WT is equal to change in K, which is WT, as we have calculated above, I'm just gonna punch it into my calculator just to make sure that um, everything is just as I calculated earlier. Okay, so I'm getting 257.79, okay? And that is equal to half of 85 times VF squared minus two squared. So we're just gonna isolate for VF, right? So I guess what I can do is I'm just gonna erase this right over here because we do have another picture at the top. Okay, so this is going to be 257.79 times two divided by 85 um, plus two squared is equal to VF squared, right? And we can just square root both sides. And the answer I'm getting is that VF is the, well, like the, obviously the absolute value. Um, the speed is 3.17 meters per second. And that's her speed at the top of the ramp. That's her solution. I hope that was helpful. That was a bit of a challenge problem, but I think it was really fun and rewarding. And I hope that was helpful as usual. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments or send me an email and I'll get back to you as soon as possible for me. Thank you so much for watching. Please, please, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.